Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message from Dr. Miles Monroe, provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. I was born in a family of 11 children. One mother, one father. Eleven children. I am number six. Right in the middle. I was born in an island seven miles wide where I still live. But I was born in the poorest village on the island. It's called Baines Town. Named after a person. I was born in a wooden house on four big rocks to keep this wooden house from being on the ground so that the roaches and the rats wouldn't get in. Well, they got in. This wooden house had two bedrooms and another room that served as kitchen, dining room, and sitting room all in one. It was made out of clapboard, they call it in the Bahamas, which was your low-income battered house that you had to keep patching up. One bedroom was for my mother and father. The other bedroom was for my seven sisters. So there were no more bedrooms. So myself and my three brothers had to sleep on the wooden floor on these mats that we got from our mother and father. We would cover ourselves with dirty sheets that would be washed every weekend. And we were bitten by rats and roaches crawled over our bodies and mosquitoes were our best friends. We would wake up with roaches all over our bodies. I remember many times we couldn't sleep because of the mosquitoes. And we lived that way, but we were very happy because we didn't know we were poor. Everybody else was poor. There was no comparison. And I remember my mother and father telling us that we must learn the Bible no matter how difficult life became. And they would teach us from this book about God and about Jesus Christ and about his sacrifice for us. And as kids, we, we grew up with those conditions. And as you grow older, you begin to question, why are we poor? Because you began to see other people's lifestyles. And, and I remember crying out to God one time at age 13. I said, if you exist, you got to speak to me and explain this to me. And it was, it was at age 13 that my life was transformed. Because that night at 3 a.m. outside on the dirt ground, under the stars in the Bahamas, with tears running down my face, I asked God to explain to me why we were poor. His answer was simple. He says, because of your mind. That began a journey for me. I surrendered my life to God that night at age 13. I never went back. At age 14, I wrote on paper everything I wanted to be and to do. Today, I am doing those things. And something happened between sleeping on the floor and flying my own jet today. Now, what happened is I had a mental transformation. Nothing changes until your mind changes. You can change your clothes and still have the whole mind. You can change your location and still have the old mind. You can change your house and still have the old mind. Nothing changes until your mind changes. And during that journey as a young man, I began to read the Bible at age 14. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm serious about this. I read this book at age 14. I read through the entire book, and I didn't understand nothing. Because the Bible is a very complicated book. And also, I read it in the King James Version, which is even worse. And, but I read it because I wanted to know what God said to man. 
when I was 15 years old, I read the Bible again, completely through. And I began to understand it. By age 16, I began to memorize big chunks of this book. And my, my school lessons went from F to A. I became an A student because of this book. I graduated top of my school in high school because of this book. It taught me that nothing was impossible. So my whole life was changed because I fed myself new information from that book, which changed my concept of me. And I discovered things like this. The greatest tragedy in life is not death. Some people think that when someone dies, that's the worst thing that can happen to you. That's not true. I discovered that the greatest tragedy in life is not death, but it's life without a purpose. It is more tragic to be alive and not know why than to be dead and not know life. Because when you are alive, you got to explain what you're doing with your hours, with your minutes, with your energy, with your talents, with your time. You got to explain why am I here and what did I do last week with my life? Most people are living as an experiment. I discovered that there are five questions that everybody must answer to become successful. I discovered this when I was 15 years old. Write them down. The first question every human must answer to become successful are these questions. And every one of you in this room got to deal with these questions. Question number one, who am I? It's a tough question. And some of you think you've answered it, but it's not an easy question to answer. Normally when I ask people who you are, they tell me what they do. I didn't ask you what you did. I asked people, who are you? They say, I'm a nurse. I, I didn't ask you what you did. I want to know who are you? How do you identify yourself? You shouldn't confuse yourself with your career. Your career is temporary. That means when you lose your job, then you lose your life. Who are you? Second question you must answer is, where am I from? Very important question. It's a tough question. As a matter of fact, humans have been trying to answer these questions for over two, 3,000 years. Today, they have been even attempting to say that you are from monkeys. Uh, they talk about evolution. They talk about man starting as a, a slime that became a salamander, that became a tadpole, that developed into a frog, which became a, eventually an ape man, that became a human. Well, I don't know about you, but I ain't no ape. And I ain't no tadpole. But they try to explain that you came from some big bang that caused some genetic coding in the slime, in the, in the abyss of six billion years ago, all this stuff they talk about. They're trying to explain where you're from. You see, until you know where you're from, you don't know who you are. What is your source? Where did you come from? It's a very important question. And the third question I had to answer and grapple with is why am I here that's a tough question why were you born why were you conceived why are you on this planet right now why did you come to earth these are tough questions and the person sitting behind you have not yet answered that question because it's a hard question we don't even like to think about it why am I here we 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 ask that question silently we don't talk about it publicly much because we are afraid we don't know the answer. Why were you born? I mean, they said when a man has sex with a woman and he releases semen into a woman, scientists have proven that over 600 million sperms rush toward the egg. And only one makes it. And guess who that was? And my question is, why did 599 million sperms die so that you could live to come to this planet. Was there a reason why the divine creator chose that specific sperm for you to come at this time? Why did you come here? It's a tough question. You didn't come here just to make a living and pay bills and then die. You 
You didn't come just to make a living. You came here to make a difference. You came to deliver something that we're supposed to have. We got to find out what that is. You're not a mistake. You are not a biological accident. So why did you come here? It's a tough question. The fourth question everybody must answer is, what can I do? What is my true ability? And this is a tough question because most of the people in this church sitting here today are living below their true potential. You don't know what you're capable of. Why? Because we have accepted other people's opinions of our own ability. We've allowed people and culture and society to tell us what we can and cannot do. I was a victim of that years ago. I had to be delivered from people. Even living in this city, this town right here, could be your greatest curse. Because there are certain things they don't expect you to do in this town. They tell you how far you can go, what you cannot do, what's never been done, and you better don't, don't upset the boat and, and don't achieve that here, and you can't do that here. They, they muffle your true ability. What can you do is the question. It's a tough question. And the fifth question, write it down, everyone must answer, is where am I going? This one has to do with your destiny. Where are you going in your life? Where will you be in the next 10 years? What do you see for the next 50 years of your life? What do you want to do with yourself in the next 40 years? What do you see in your life as your future destiny? What's your hope to become and to do in your life? Or are you simply waiting for the next paycheck? Is your life as short as the next bill you pay? Is there a sense of destiny in your life? God sent me here to talk to you to let you know that you are not just here as a passing fantasy. You came to this planet because something that you need to do is still undone. Tell your neighbor, I am loaded. Say it again, I am loaded. Say it again, I am loaded. He'll be okay. Just keep looking at me, please. Write this down, please. Very important. You were created to live life with meaning and purpose. You are not a mistake. As a matter of fact, until you discover your personal reason for living, you will never be fulfilled. You were born, sir, to do something important in this world. That's why I am convinced that all of us were created for a purpose, equipped with potential and designed for a destiny. I am convinced that you are loaded with stuff that we haven't seen yet and is trapped under your fear of people. As a matter of fact, some of your greatest graveyards are your jobs. Nothing can bury you faster than a career that you're trapped in. You were born to do something that the world needs. And that's why until you discover your purpose, you can never maximize your potential. I'm going to explain that to you in a few minutes before we go. Your purpose, madam, is the most important thing for you to discover. Because when you find your purpose, you automatically find your potential. And when you find your purpose and potential, you become unstoppable. No human opinion can touch you when you discover your purpose in life. Oh, I'm about to shout all by myself. This is why you and I had to meet tonight. I had to fly all day from my country to come here because God is saying, I'm going to fix you this year. I'm going to break free this year. I'm going to open you up this year. This year you are going to launch into things you never thought you could do. This year is your year of breaking out. Say breaking out. Say it loud. As we drove here from the airport to the town this afternoon, I saw something that always stirs me. And it makes me ask a question I asked when I was 17 years old. I asked this question. What is the wealthiest spot on planet Earth? Where is the greatest wealth on Earth? And someone says, well, maybe it is the gold mines of South America, or it's the diamond mines of South Africa, 
or the oil fields of Iran, Iraq, and Kuwait, or maybe it is the silver mines of Peru, or maybe it's the oceans of the Caribbean with all that seafood. What is the wealthiest spot on earth? I found it. The wealthiest spot on earth is right here in Marion. I saw it today. The wealthiest spot on earth looks just like this. It's the cemetery. Why is the cemetery the wealthiest spot on earth? Do you know why? Because buried in the cemetery are books that were never written. In the graveyard, we've got paintings that were never painted. Buried in the cemetery right here in Marion is music that no one has ever heard. Because people died with music in their minds. What a tragedy. The graveyard is filled with businesses that never open. Some of you had a business idea for the last 20 years and you are still employed. Because you wouldn't step out and believe God with that idea. And the cemetery is going to take that business from us. The graveyard is filled with ideas that never became reality. The graveyard is filled with visions that died as nightmares and dreams. We got plans that were never executed. The graveyard is filled with awesome, powerful treasure no one has ever used. As a matter of fact, that is why I came here. Because I had to come. I came here because of the cemetery. I came here because I knew sitting in your chair right now tonight would be a person who is the candidate to add to the wealth of the cemetery. You are about to make the cemetery even more wealthy. Why? Because trapped in you is a book that you are procrastinating on. Inside of you is an idea that you still refuse to pursue. Inside of you is music that you never wrote, poetry you never wrote. How come the cemetery is going to take from us again? I have come to make sure the cemetery doesn't get anything from you. I really came here to Marion, South Carolina to make sure that you die empty. Yeah. You came to earth to go back to God empty. I came here to make sure that the graveyard gets nothing but an empty carcass. I came here to make sure that when you die, you will die like Jesus Christ, who says, it is finished. Listen to me. He didn't die old. He was 33 years old when he died. That's young. But to him, he was finished. That means you ain't supposed to die old. You're supposed to die finished. But you can't finish if you don't know what to start. Life is not measured by how old you are. It's measured by how much you got left. You're supposed to die like the Apostle Paul. Paul says, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have been poured out like a drink offering. There's nothing else left, he says. I am now ready to die. You should die not because you're sick and old, but because you ain't got nothing left to do. Give God a hand for dying empty. The graveyard is filled with wealth. This is why God sent me here. Because you are getting closer to the graveyard. And you are still loaded. I wonder, what do you call this wealth in the cemetery? Well, I found out what it is. Write it down. The wealth in the cemetery is called potential. What is it called? Potential. Say it loud. Potential. One more time. Potential. Say it louder. Potential. This word is very important to God. Everybody say potential again. Potential. This word is intimate with God and we don't understand the word. We've missed it. What changed my life from sleeping on the floor 
to running a multi-million dollar organization around the world today in 89 countries is because I discovered this one word. When I discovered it, everything changed. I'm about to give you my secret. Everybody say potential. The graveyard is packed with potential. What is potential? Write this down. First of all, potential is dormant ability. Dormant ability. Secondly, potential is untapped power. Untapped power. Thirdly, potential is hidden strength. Strength that is hidden away. Fourthly, potential is reserved energy. Like the car battery. In your car is a whole lot of power in that battery, but it is hidden away. It is dormant. It is buried. In other words, potential is kept capacity. When your capacity is being kept and no one lets it out. Potential is unused success. Potential is also unleashed talent. Why is this choir still singing other people's songs? when you can write your own songs for other people to sing. Yes. There is music in this choir trapped inside of you. Will the graveyard get that? Oh Marvin Sapp is not the only one that can write a song. You can write a song. You can produce music. You can change the world with your music. But you got to understand it's trapped. Potential is all you can do but you haven't done yet. Potential is all you can become, but you haven't become it yet. Potential is a very strange concept. Uh, potential is who you really are, but no one knows it yet. Hallelujah. I'm going to make a statement. Don't ever forget it. Every person write it down. Whatever you have done, is no longer your potential. Whatever you have what? Done is no longer your potential. Potential is always what you haven't done yet, but you can still do. In other words, potential is the you that nobody knows yet. We already know the one you showed us. As a matter of fact, the greatness you are still to attain is trapped on the inside. Potential, therefore, is what you can accomplish but you haven't achieved yet. That's why I come to this church to talk to this church also. 18 years, God is saying, well, okay. You built this building five years ago. You have a beautiful structure. Well, thank God. But God is bored. Listen to me carefully. Potential is never what you've done. Because once you've done something, it ceases to be your potential. Potential is always what's left that you haven't done yet. Potential is always hidden. God is a God of potential. He always goes after what you haven't done yet. He is Bored in what you've done. <laughs> Once you've done something, it's over. <laughs> Potential, therefore, is always what's left that you haven't done yet. And God always is motivated by potential. Why? Because God knows what he put inside you. This building, 18 years later, is not the one God showed you. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I right? Yes, sir. This is just a stop on the way to another stage. Yeah. And God has said, okay, stop here, put up a pillar, yeah. call it Ebenezer, but keep moving. Yeah. See, we are so attracted to our own success. Yeah. We begin to worship our own success. As a matter of fact, write this down. The greatest enemy of progress is your last success. 
I'm going to say it again. The greatest enemy of your progress is your last success. Say it with me. The greatest enemy of my progress is what? My last success. That means nothing can stop you from growing like success. You can become so proud of what you've done that you stop doing what you could do. You see, potential is never what you've done because once you've done it, it's no longer your potential. Potential is always hidden. It demands that you never settle for what you have accomplished. Take a photograph of this building. Come in here and worship every week. Fine. But ask God, okay, what's next? He said, build a school and build a radio station and build a TV station and build a youth center and build a children's school and build an old folks home. In other words, he never stops. Oh, I hope you hear me. You are not supposed to die on the job you have. God's too creative to make you die in a career. Oh, I'm talking to myself. You all ain't ready for me. He never stops. He's, he is always going after potential. As a matter of fact, write this down. The greatest enemy of your potential is what? Your last success. Don't ever trust what you've achieved. It will trap you. I remember Peter, James, and John was taken up on a mountain by Jesus Christ. They was meeting with, Joe, with Moses and Elijah. And they saw him in his original state. He began to glow. The Bible says God is light. So when Christ <laughs> showed his true self through his skin and they saw the light, prayed as the sun, prayed as the sun, Peter and James and John found their faces and they were so overwhelmed. They saw something they never saw before. And they said, let's stay right here. Let's build three houses and just stay up here. That's how we are. We like to stay where God does stuff. Write this down. Don't ever get caught where God used to be. Some of your testimonies are so old, God is tired of them. I don't want to hear what he did in 1954. I'm sick of that. Give me something he did last night. God is too creative to repeat himself. That's why he never duplicated a miracle in the Bible. Not once. God never repeated a miracle in the Bible. Never. Why? He's too creative. He's a God of potential. This ministry has done this. Well, good. It's done. It's no longer your potential. There's a church inside this church now. Another one. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. This is why potential is never finished. Say it with me. Potential is never finished. I'm about to send you home shouting with a revelation that's going to keep you up all night. Are you ready for this? Are you sure? Write the word omni down. O-M-N-I. It's a word you never saw before. Omni. O-M-N-I. The word omni... I saw it on a saw in Carolina, North Carolina the other day. The word omni means all. It means entire. It means always all. It means complete or total. Everybody say omni. omni. Say it loud. Omni. omni. Good. Say it again. Omni. omni. Get used to this word. It's an important word to you. Now, there's another word to write down. It's the word potent. The word potent, P-O-T-E-N-T, -E is the word which means power. It means might, energy, strength. It means force. Everybody say potent. potent. Say it again, potent. potent. It means power. It means might. It means strength. It means energy. Now take the word omni and put it next to the word potent.
And you should have a new word that you probably heard before. How do you pronounce that? I can't hear you. Omnipotent. Omnipotent. Everybody say omnipotent. There's only one person that name is ascribed to. Who's that? Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shiskanu, God himself. He is what? Omnipotent. Omnipotent means all potential. Oh, I'm getting ready to talk to myself. God is not only the God of potential, he is potential. He is all power. Oh Lord, have mercy. Do you know what that means? Listen to me carefully. That means that God says he himself is omnipotent. That means he is all potential. He is always full of potential. No, you don't hear what I'm saying. That means what God has done already. He spit out of his mouth with his word 500 million galaxies. He made Milky Ways and he made solar systems. He made all the eons of space and black holes. He made all these millions of planets. And then God made a solar system with one sun and three planets from the sun. He called it Earth and he made of rivers and, and forests and birds and bees and fish and animals and beautiful stuff and God says this is good and then God made all this powerful universe and God says I am still omnipotent that means you ain't seen nothing yet come on give him a big praise for being omnipotent Omnipotent means I am still loaded. Oh Lord, have mercy. When you walk outside, look at the stars, the millions of stars. God says, you ain't seen nothing yet. I haven't shown you everything on the inside of me. As a matter of fact, here's the mystery. Before anything was, God is. That means everything that is, was inside of God because there was a time when there was nothing but God so if you meant God when there was nothing you would meet God standing on nothing by the corner of nowhere full with everything everything was made by him the Bible says that means before he made anything everything was inside of him and therefore he released everything out of him when he was standing on nothing by the corner of nowhere. Here's the beauty of being full of potential. That means if you meant God before anything was on the corner of nowhere by the corner of not nothing and you shook his hands, you'd be shaking hands with everything but wouldn't have known you'd be shaking hands with everything. Oh, you don't hear what I've said. In other words, potential is always hidden on the inside. That's why you got to be careful how you treat people. You don't know what they're carrying. Oh, I'm talking to myself tonight. Tell your neighbor, be nice to me. You don't know what I'm carrying. Hey, where's the potential? Say it again, potential. Say it again, potential. Say it again, potential. That's why you should never judge a person by looking at them. He is omnipotent. That means he is all powerful, almighty. He is all strength. He is still full of stuff you haven't seen yet. That's why God never panics. If he can't find something, he'll go inside and bring it out. Oh, glory, hallelujah. God has never stopped creating. What he needs, if he doesn't have it, he'll produce it. That's why you should go to sleep tonight. Don't worry about tomorrow. He got everything covered. Whatever you need, he'll make it if he have to. He is omnipotent. Shout amen, somebody. Come on, give him praise. Ah! He's omnipotent, son. That word is not a religious word. It's a description of his reality. In other words, omnipotent means that God is still able to do more than he has done. You think this building is nice? Wait till you see the next one he's going to put up right here. Somebody ought to shout loud. I'm trying to be nice tonight. Ah! 
<laughs> mm. Tell your neighbor, be careful. You don't know who you're sitting next to. You don't know what I'm carrying. I'm loaded. Clap your hands, all your people. Shout! They don't know who you are, son. Oh, I'm getting ready to shout again. <laughs> he is almighty. He is omnipotent. Look at Genesis 17 verse 1. It says, when Abraham was 90 years old. Ooh, sound like some of y'all. It says, the Lord appeared to him when he was what? 90. And God introduced himself with a word. Now you see, he knows the guy is 90 yeah. and can't have children yeah. and his wife is barren. Yeah. No, no, you didn't hear what I said. Yeah. God already know what you think you cannot do. <laughs> so God said, Abraham, before you say anything, let me say who I am. I am what? God all potential. Oh, Lord have mercy. In other words, before we do business let me tell you who i am i can do anything i say you should do now i can say it again i can do anything i say you should do still didn't get what i said <laughs> i can do anything i say you should do so let me tell you who i am i am all might now let's talk he says God will never tell you to do anything that isn't already done. All right. This building is an old building. God finally found somebody dumb enough to believe it's possible. is alpha and omega he's finished God is trying to find people who will start things that are already finished I am almighty Abraham now let's talk I am all potential look at Isaiah 14 verse 26 God says this is the plan I determined for the whole world. This is the hand stretched out over all nations. For the Lord Almighty has purpose. And who can stop him? His hand is stretched out. And who can turn it back? Listen, I am almighty. Let me explain what that means in Hebrew. Almighty means all potential. All energy all powers i have all of them under my control that means nothing can stop you and if it thinks it's stopping you god's allowing it to do something for you until it's finished doing what it's supposed to do it can't stop you If he's almighty, then that means no might is not under his control. If you think you lost your job, he sent me to tell you, mm -mm, that was a setup. Start your own business now. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh! He is almighty. Let me give you this before we go. Where does potential come from? Write this down. Very important list, everyone. Number one, God is potential. He's omnipotent. Number two, God is the source of potential. That means every power comes out of God. Number three, God is a God of potential. That means he does nothing without potential principle. Number four, Everything was created 
with potential principle. Everything that God created, he put in it potential principle. This is the biggest thing I'm going to give you for tonight, all right? Write this down, number five. Everything possesses potential. How many things? Everything. everything. How many things? Everything. Please don't miss this. This is what got me delivered at age 17. Everything God created possessed potential. That leads to number six. Potential is a product of purpose. Oh, I, mean, I need to be here two more weeks just to talk about that. Purpose is why a thing exists. Potential is its ability to perform it. So when God makes a thing for a purpose, he puts in it its own potential. So potential is a product of purpose. That leads to number seven. Potential precedes purpose. In other words, God will never demand from something what he didn't put in it. Do you understand what I just said, sir? I hear you, sir. So when God tells someone to do something, it's because he put the do in it. No, you still ain't got it yet. This is why when God commands to do something, excuse is impossible. Let me, let, me, let me drive this on before we go. I discovered that God does nothing without potential principle. That means whatever God created, he built it with potential in it. Let me give you a verse to remember. Genesis 1, verse 12. This is the first place God introduced potential. Now, get ready. You're about to change right before someone's eyes. God created the universe, created the planets, created our solar system, created the earth, and then he started in Genesis 1 putting stuff on the earth. Now, listen carefully, because when I see you again, you'll be a different person. God is about to show us how everything is made. Verse 11, Genesis chapter 1, it says, and the earth brought forth grass and herd and yields seed according to its kind. And the tree that yields the fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind. Now this is too complicated for you. Let me break it down. When I went to university, I got three bachelor's degrees, two master's degrees, and four doctorates. I'm not a dumb man, okay? I took a course in Hebrew at university, or Arab's or, or university. When I did my course in Hebrew and in Greek, I was shocked to discover that most of the stuff we read in English don't make sense. The Bible was written in Hebrew, not English. Old Testament. In the Hebrew language, here's the way this is written. It says, and the Lord God made the trees and the plants and he hid in them their own seed. It says, and God placed the seed of everything in itself. Now read my lips. God placed the seed of everything in itself. Let me say it over here because you all don't understand what I'm talking about. It says, and God placed the seed of everything inside itself. The Hebrew context means whatever God wants a thing to become he hides it in the thing oh I'm getting ready to run right across there in other words God takes everything a thing is supposed to become and put it inside the thing and he gives you the thing with everything in it <laughs> You ain't get that yet. This is the key to your future. God, therefore, finishes everything first. Oh, I'm getting ready to go home now. Oh, you gotta get this, please. Some of y'all still don't believe me. God finishes everything first, and then He takes the finish. 
and puts it in the start. That's what that means. He calls it seed. Even Jesus said, I am a seed. If you plant me in the ground, I will bring forth millions. Listen to me. And we're going to go, oh Lord. God says, you see this here? God says, look. He says, I put the seed of everything in itself. He says, everything is in a seed. God does not give trees. He that giveth seed. Tell your neighbor, you don't know what I am. And he gave me to you. Yes, sir. God doesn't give adults. He hides them in children. And, <laughs> come here. I want to show you something. Don't forget this. Are you all ready for me? All right. God, today we got 6.7 billion humans on earth right now 6.7 billion God only made one yes. oh, uh, listen to me now God went to the soil and made one and God blew in to one now remember, God don't start until he's already finished. So God started, which means he was already finished. You see, God finished with everybody first. He made everybody first and then took everybody and put them in one body. So Adam was everybody in one body that's the seed so in the garden when God was talking to Noah I mean to Adam rather he was talking to everybody in one body so God told everybody in one body don't touch the tree if you shook hands with Adam you'd be shaking hands with everybody you wouldn't have known it because everybody was in that one body and whatever that one body does, everybody does. That's why the Bible says by one man, sin entered into the whole world and was passed upon all men because everybody was in that one body. Everybody said potential. Adam was loaded. When God finished all the instructions, then God didn't go outside to find a female. He went inside the brother, pulled out, come on somebody. She was already in there. Everybody said potential. potential. That means everybody was in the one body. This is why Jesus Christ didn't need a million bodies to die. Because when he came, he had Adam. He was the last Adam. He had Adam inside of him. He had everybody inside his body. So by one man sin entered, by one man all was saved. But come on, somebody. Thank you very much, Adam. Now, follow me. We're gonna go, follow me. So that means when God has a seed, here's what God says. I put the seed of everything inside the seed. It's called potential. So in every seed, I have a seed, there's a seed. I ask you, what do you see? Okay, this is an apple seed. What do you see? You say, I see an apple seed. Well, that's a fact, but it's not the truth. Because what I have in my hand is not an apple seed. I have an apple tree. But that's not 
the truth either because in that seed is an apple tree with apples but that ain't quite the truth yet because in that seed is an apple tree that has apples that are seeds and those seeds in the apple get trees but that ain't true either because in that seed there's an apple tree that has apples that have seeds that have trees and those trees get apples that have seeds that have trees that have fruit that have seeds with trees with fruit that have seeds with trees with fruit that have apples with seeds with trees that have fruit that have seeds that have trees that have fruit and those fruit get seeds with seeds with trees that have fruit that have seeds that have trees that have fruit that have seeds that have trees with fruit with seeds and those seeds got trees that have fruit, that have seeds, that have trees, that have fruit. What did God do here? In my hand, you see an apple seed. That's a fact. But the truth is, I have a forest. Tell your neighbor, it's a fact right now that I'm broke. But the truth is, I'm loaded. Give God a hand for potential. Your son today is an alcoholic. God says, no, that's just a fact. The truth is, he's going to be a great preacher in Mario. God can look at a murderer and see inside the murderer. Now the fact is, he's a murderer. That's a fact. But the truth is, inside of him is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Inside a murderer. The next time you read the book of Genesis or Exodus or Leviticus, you're reading the writings of a murderer. Only God look at a murderer and see a deliverer. The Ten Commandments, the laws of God inside a murderer. Hey boys, a potential. That means none of your mistakes can cancel what you carry in. Come on, scream, say amen. Only God could look at a shepherd boy and see a king on the inside. Only God could look at a prostitute named Rahab and see the lineage of Jesus Christ inside a prostitute. Only God could look at a shepherd boy in the wilderness and see the leader of a country only God can look at a serial killer named Saul and see Genesis coming true in the New Testament inside that serial killer he said first second Corinthians Colossians Galatians Ephesians Philippians he saw the New Testament in a serial killer I wonder what he's seeing tonight looking down on this building he never sees what you've done. He sees what you are carrying. And you are carrying awesome treasure. Let no one cancel your future with their words. Tell your neighbor, I am who he says I am. I can do what he says I can do. If I see it, it's already done. And I'm going to my destiny. I am full of potential. Give God a big scream and shout for a second. I want you to understand tonight that he knew you'd be here. And he knew that you hit a brick wall. Your life has stopped. And he has sent this word to tell this church and to tell you visitors, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. 
Oh, come on, give him glory. Come on, give him praise. Oh, come on, give him glory. Oh, stand up on your feet and give him worship. Mr. Mayor, what are you dreaming? That's the question. What, are you, what is he showing you when you was a child? Being a mayor is nothing. Why? It's done. Now go be governor. Do something else. Dream big. This is why the word retirement does not exist in the Bible. Don't get quiet on me now. It's not in the Bible. You don't retire. You empty yourself and then you leave. God called Abraham at 75 years old. He got started at 75. What's your problem? Tell your neighbor you ain't seen nothing yet. Tell your neighbor, no retirement. No retirement. Refirement. Refirement. Come on, get that fire back. Give God a praise. You got to get that fire back in your bones, brother. Hallelujah. Let's hold hands together. Take your neighbor's hands on your right and left. Tell your neighbor, I'm loaded. I'm loaded. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you don't know who I am yet. Keep holding that hand. I want to pray for you. Our organization is in over 100 countries in 30 years. We are worth millions of dollars. Started with nothing but an idea. Potential. My first employee in the company and in our organization was my eldest sister. She's 11 children. She's my she's eldest sister. Eldest one in the family. When I was born, she told me that I was born with asthma. And she and mom told me stories how I literally died many times choking in that wooden crib. And that how she would get up every night when she heard me choking. She would pick me up out of that dirty wooden crib, put me on her shoulder. And my sister said she would walk that wooden floor, not sleeping. Because she knew if she lie me down, I would turn blue again and die. And for months, she says, every night she would get up to make sure I didn't die. You know, today... My eldest sister is my administrative assistant. I pay her salary. And she and I were talking in the office a couple of months ago again, and, and she was reminding me. She says, you, you are all over the world on television. You have books in 89 countries, 30 languages. Offices in 17 nations. Millions of people being impacted by you all over the world. Should I remember walking up and down with you. Saving you from death. And I said to her, isn't that amazing? You didn't know all those nights you had your boss in your hand. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, be careful with that hand. I could be your next boss. You don't know anybody in this room. You don't know who is in this room. Stop canceling people. Don't throw your children away. Don't throw members away who fall. You don't know what they carry. This is why God loves the garbage dump. 
Every time society throws someone away, God catches them. Because he knows what he put inside of you. He died to protect the treasure that you carry. We have this treasure in earthen vessels to show forth the glory. My sister had no idea. Not only would I pay her salary, but her husband is my financial vice president. Her daughter works in my mentorship department. Her second daughter works in my television department. I pay the salary of all of her family. She was carrying that in her hand every night. Didn't know what she was carrying. Tell your neighbor, be nice to me. You don't know. Hallelujah. You are not finished yet. There are books inside of you. The job you have is not where you will die. You are as big as your dreams. Not as big as Maria. Believe what he showed you. Don't give up, son. Don't go to school for their sake. Go to school for your own sake. Study for your dreams. 18 years. It's okay. You done okay. I'm coming back at 36. You will not be in this room. This will be too small. This will be a children's church. Can you see? All you pastors, God sent you here. Because you think that the building you're in is the permanent address. But God says it's your temporary residence. God sent me here, you young people. Because you figured you can't go any further. And God says, I'm sending you a word. Follow your dream. Not your culture. The Holy Spirit has already finished you. The fact that you were born is evidence that there's something already finished that you were born to start. And this is why, and listen carefully as I close, Jesus did not die 2,000 years ago. <laughs> he came to start dying 2,000 years ago the Bible says he was dead he was slain before I rest my case God was finished God saved you before you sinned oh come on give him glory Come on, give him glory. I said give him praise. Finish. Finish. And that's why he's here tonight to tell you what you saw when you was 14 is still true. What you saw when you were 20 is still true. What you saw when you were 29 is still true. So dust off yourself. Get back up. And put your vision back in place. And when you go to work tomorrow, tell them, I'm going to my preoccupation. 
this is my temporary employment this is not what I saw for the joy that was set before him he could endure the low salary and the abuse and the misunderstanding for the joy that was set before he had already seen the end so it has together again something's happening here don't you feel that on the inside your childhood dreams are coming back do you know why ma'am because he said when the Holy Spirit comes upon a person he didn't come for you to fall on the ground he came so that the old men could get their dreams back and the young men shall get their visions back and the handmaidens shall see prophetic sight he comes to give you back the dream that you lost Hallelujah. it's the Holy Spirit this year preach the next 10 years tell them what you see oh man get your dream back Get your dream back. Your body is not your limitation. Your brain is still working. Young man, get your vision back. Go back, get your vision. Don't get a job. They can fire you from that. Get a vision. Young woman, see your future and put it on paper. And believe what you're right. And the Holy Spirit shall come upon all men. And the young shall see visions again. And the old shall get dreams again. They will see their end. Marion is about to explode. New businesses, new churches, new companies, new investments, new ideas, books and music and publishing and magazines coming out of Marion, going around the world. God says, I'm going to change the world right from here. Can you believe it? Believe your dream. And let no adult talk you out of them. Believe your dreams. When I was 14 years old, I wrote on paper, I will build buildings. I will fly my own jet. I will speak to millions. I will be on TV. I will write books. I was 14. And my family said, are you crazy? And I said, this is what I saw. You should see what else I saw. Next week, I'll be with the government of Curacao training the entire government week after that the government of Aruba training the entire government including the president and the prime ministers in my seminars that's what I saw it's happening right now <laughs> God begins you with nothing so he could be everything. You are not what you have. You are what you saw. So go dream again.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the hand that we are touching is loaded. Forgive us for assuming we know them. Forgive us for thinking that we understand them. Oh God, forgive us for being reckless with our love. Forgive us for having prejudice and racism and all the stuff that breaks these barriers. Lord, we pray we will see the gift that's in every one of us. Help us to cherish the potential on the inside. Help us to protect each other. May we never act in any way that will destroy our potential. Protect our friendships, Lord. I pray you release right now the spirit of revelation in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, stir up every dream, stir up every gift, stir up every vision in everyone here, Lord. As we agree in faith, stir up our gifts. Restore our vision. help us to believe what you say Lord not what people think deliver us from people that we may fulfill your purpose thank you father thank you father thank you father thank you father thank you for this week Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, feel that anointing in your stomach. Let that dream come back to life. Restore what has been taken away from you. Your vision back. Thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.